Hey, what's up? It's Lure from Tankspot, and welcome back to the StarCraft II Beta Journal. Uh, last time I went over the Protoss units and got absolutely flooded with requests to see the Zerg units next, so here you go. Uh, the new Queen is one of the most important new units to the Zerg force. She's been redesigned completely from the original StarCraft and now spends most of her time and energy inside the base. Uh, her first and most important ability is called Spawn Larva. Using this on a hatchery will cause it, after a short delay, to spawn five extra larvae, which can then be used for unit production. Uh, this reduces the Zerg reliance on having multiple hatcheries and fast expansions in the early game, uh, and gives them the ability to train a very large force very rapidly in the late game. The Queen also has the ability to spawn creep tumors, which replace the creep colonies of the original StarCraft. Uh, the obvious benefit here is that you no longer have to sacrifice a drone to spread the area in which you can build. Uh, as a side note, sunken colonies and spore colonies have been replaced with spine crawlers and spore crawlers, which serve essentially the same purpose, they're just not upgrades of other structures. The Queen also does decently well in combat. Uh, you probably don't want to take her out of your base for an attack, but she can keep you from losing your workers to a couple of early units. Zerglings are back, and they're pretty much the same as they were in the original. Uh, they're excellent early harassers, and they're still incredibly cheap to produce. They're just pretty weak in small numbers. Uh, in StarCraft II, you can give them some pretty powerful upgrades. Aside from the movement and attack speed upgrades, they can also be morphed into Banelings. These guys work best as ambushers. They explode when they touch an enemy unit, causing a pretty sizable amount of damage, so keeping a bunch of them burrowed at a choke point can leave a nasty surprise for a group of enemy units. These are roaches, and they're totally new to StarCraft II. Uh, they're great early assault units that do a large amount of damage and regenerate health very quickly while burrowed. Uh, they can only attack ground units, however, so they're strongest in the early game. Overlords have seen a few changes. Uh, they still provide supply and they can still be used as transports, but now they also have the ability to spawn creep beneath them, which can be handy for quickly setting up and defending a new expansion. They aren't detectors anymore though, so for that you'll need to upgrade one into an Overseer. Uh, they'll lose their ability to spawn creep and transport units, but Overseers can detect invisible units and gain the ability to spawn changelings, which take the form of an enemy unit and can provide some easy scouting past base defenses. Uh, they're pretty easily recognized and killed, but if you're careful you can get some important intel before that happens. Hydralists are back, although they're not quite the bread and butter unit they were before. Uh, they're now a tier 2 unit, and they seem a little stronger overall, especially against light units. Uh, as you can see here, as soon as this wave of banshees is visible, the hydras just mow through them pretty easily. Mutalists are back also, and although not much has changed about them, the changes to other races' air units make them pretty strong. Uh, they can attack both air and ground targets, they're fast, they're relatively cheap to produce, and their bouncing attacks make them very strong against groups of smaller units. Uh, they're also not too deep in the tech tree, and with the Zerg ability to create a large force of units quickly, uh, that spells trouble for anyone who spends too much resources on units that can't attack air. New to the Zerg Air Force is the Corruptor. Uh, they have an air-to-air -air attack that's pretty strong on its own, but does almost twice as much damage to massive units like these battle cruisers. Uh, they're also armored, which makes them pretty tough to kill, and when you combine them with the Mutalisk, uh, they give Zerg a very strong air presence. Uh, they also have the ability to corrupt enemy structures like these photon cannons, which disables them for 30 seconds. Uh, you can also see here how dangerous a large number of fully upgraded Zerglings really is. Corruptors can morph into Broodlords, which are very similar to Guardians from the Brood War expansion. Uh, the biggest difference is that each of their attacks, which are already pretty strong, also spawns two Broodlings, which do a fair amount of damage on their own. Uh, otherwise, they're functionally identical to Guardians as very strong air-to-ground assault units. These are Infestors, which are the Zerg's caster unit. 
Uh, probably their most dangerous ability is Fungal Growth, which immobilizes all units in a small radius and deals some damage over time. Uh, just a couple of Infestors can easily take out a sizable number of infantry with this ability. Infestors can also spawn Infested Terran, which are completely different from their StarCraft 1 version. Uh, instead of exploding, they just fire a gun, and they only last a short period of time before they die. Uh, they're not very strong, but since the Infestor can move while burrowed, you can get some easy harassment on an undefended expansion. Finally, Infestors can mind control enemies. Uh, it can be tough to use though since it has a short cast time and leaves the Infestor completely vulnerable while it's up. Uh, it can be useful in some situations, but most of the time it's better to use your energy on fungal growth instead or counter the enemy's force with some other strategy. Here we have the mighty Ultralisk. Uh, just like in the original StarCraft, these guys are huge, they move slow, and they do a ton of damage to anything they can get in range of. Uh, in StarCraft 2, their attacks also hit everything directly in front of them, not just the unit they're attacking, which makes them absolutely devastating against groups of small enemies. Uh, they also do a ridiculous amount of damage to buildings, a uh, 60 damage baseline per attack. Uh, that means in about 3 seconds, 3 Ultralisks can do more damage to a single building than a tactical nuke. Finally, there's the Nidus Worm. Uh, these take the place of Nidus Canals from the original StarCraft and can be spawned in anywhere you have sight. Uh, you start by loading a force into a Nidus network and then picking a spot for the worm to spawn. Uh, once it's finished, just unload. That's just about everything for the Zerg. Uh, be sure to check back in in a couple weeks when I go over the Terran units, and a lot has changed there as well. Uh, see you next time.